to the Spiritual Handy Band Internet TV Show. My name is Jason Antelik, and I am your ongoing host. I uh, want to remind you guys that you can catch us at thespiritualhandyman.com. You can also check out our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're, we're in all the fine places. You can always join, like, subscribe, share, everything that is available out there to get the word out about the Spiritual Handyman. We appreciate uh, every part of what you do. So to our viewers and listeners, please feel free to uh, attach yourself to any of those channels of communication. And today we have a special guest, and this is Jill Liberté. Did I mess that up, Plenty? Yeah, I did. Uh, so <laughs> Jill, Jill is, uh, is a personal friend and colleague, and she is also uh, an astrologer. Uh, she also works with chakras, is a spiritual teacher, and uh, uh, does energetic healing as well. Uh, she is, is a very talented lady, and uh, today she is going to help us sift through some of the spiritual jargon that is so prevalent in conversations, and it's all about wondering what do these things really mean. So through our experience and through uh, helping others connect with that, uh, hopefully we're going to give you some ideas on what, uh, what those uh, words are going to mean for you. So uh, Jill, thanks so much for being here. And will you please, for the masses, uh, say your name correctly so they know how to refer to you? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, my name is Jill Valverte. Um, and Jason, I am so honored uh, to be here with you today to talk about spiritual jargon. It's such an important topic. Um, I've been on this path of working in the spiritual world for decades. Um, and I think it's really important that we take these common terms that are kind of thrown around and help, you know, break it down to some really basic, easy ways, easy ways for people to understand them. Uh, you're so right. And, and like I was saying, it, it, the, these words come up and, and it takes some time to, to figure out what they mean. And, and as a new person, you, you don't want to be that, per, the, that one that has, well, what does this mean? What does this word mean? Personally, I just ask because uh, I, I, I just want to know and I like other people's input. Uh, but we've, we've definitely got some terms today that will get us started. Uh, I feel like there could be more shows on this same thing. So we, we may be visiting this uh, again later down the road, which would obviously be, uh, be useful to our, our listeners and our viewers. Uh, so to just get us started, uh, I know we've agreed on a few terms, but I'd love to start with uh, spiritual, you know, because that's, that's really what we're talking about. So what is spiritual? Uh, what, is, what does that mean in this reference? And, and help us understand that. Great. Well, spiritual, there's, there are so many different definitions and interpret interpretations of it. And I found one definition I'd like to share with you, and it's by uh, uh, Margaret, Dr. Margaret Paul. And it's really like, what is a spiritual person? And, and her definition reads, being a spiritual person is synonymous with being a person whose highest priority is to be loving to yourself and others. A spiritual person cares about people, animals, and the planet. A spirit attempts to honor this oneness. A spiritual person is a kind person. Um, so I thought that was a really nice starting definition to work with because um, oftentimes people question, it's like, um, if you're spiritual, then you're not religious. Or if you're, um, can you be religious and spiritual at the same time? Um, and if I practice yoga or meditate, does that make me a spiritual person? Um, and to me, the core, the core of that spiritual part is that honoring of self and others um, and really expressing it and not giving it lip service. Um, how does that, does that make sense to you? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, I love that you, that you shared that quote that uh, it makes a lot of sense in, in so many different forms. And, and one of the things that I, that I want to add to that is uh, while it is about ourselves and, you know, the, the life around us, the animals, the trees, the plants and all that, um, it's also about being in service to others and to each, to ourselves and to each other. And, and that, that piece of being in service, uh, I, I think is, is really important. So, uh, 
when we say in service, what does that mean? Since we're talking spiritual jargon here, uh, for me, when I say in service, what I mean is helping those that are around us and uh, holding our space in such a way that that we're putting forth a positive vibe, good energy, uh, being interactive and communicative with others. And by others, I don't mean just you and me, obviously, or, or our, our listeners and viewers. I also mean the trees and the plants and the air and uh, just, just being open to having that connection with different things. And being in service is really uh, for ourselves is about doing the best that we can uh, with what we've got to work with in the moment, right? So uh, spiritually in service, you know, when we combine those things, it sounds to me like uh, where we're headed is, uh, is being connected with those things outside of ourselves and, and connecting with those things uh, in the most positive way possible. Would you, would you agree with that? Do you have an expanding viewpoint on it? Yes. Um, the, it is about connecting with people outside of ourselves. But I think we need to start internally with ourselves with that. So being of service and having it spiritual, what's the root of where we're coming from with that expression of how we, how we connect with people around us and being that kind and being of service. Um, um, and service is, a, service is a tricky word. Um, uh, service is you know, helping other people um, selflessly and, and uh, kind of giving of yourself. And um, in the astrology that I work do uh, mostly when I speak with the Virgos and Pisces, um, those are the two main signs that work in, in the service arena. It's a slippery slope. We can start uh, being of service and helping people, but then sometimes that can turn into like a, um, a negative connotation where we're helping people with resentment or anger. And when that happens, we need to stop and become selfish and go back and take care of ourselves again. And then we can go out and be more centered and be able to, to be of service and help the people around us. Right. And, and I think, um, well, I, the terms keep popping up now. So like centered, <laughs> centered suddenly, I feel like every, uh, every sentence has a word that we could define. So it's, it's great that we have uh, the opportunity to do more than one show. Right. Uh, and, and I get what you're saying about uh, being in service to ourselves and, and spiritually, uh, one thing that I always share with people is that when you start on this journey, uh, you might as well go ahead and start looking within first because that is where it's going anyway. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. You are, yeah. you are certainly going to look within to, to get anywhere on a spiritual journey. That's right. And the, in the spiritual journey, the spiritual path, um, I looked at it because once, once you start this path, there's no going back. And it's like, it's like really going down the, the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland because you start exploring all these different concepts and concepts and understandings that makes help to make sense of the world that we live in beyond our just basic mundane life of you know work and and um, uh, taking care of self and family. And you you hit that one right on that uh, we start looking for answers outside of the normal outside of the just the things that we do every day. And uh, also having some experience in corporate America, when you have that kind of you know, rigid programming and this is what's expected and this is how you have to be. Uh, and then you start to look outside of that and, and realize there's so much more available. Uh, that's, that's that spiritual journey poking at you. You know, you're, you've got to, you're going to get started. You're going to find out more about you. And, uh, and that's when things really get interesting. Is, is when that uh, when that door opens and you realize that it's okay spiritually to work on yourself and and we're we're in such a, an achievement uh, driven a society that uh, we lose sight of taking care of ourselves because we're supposed to take care of the masses but we can't do that until we've uh, we've addressed where we're at absolutely absolutely um, and looking at where we're at one of the best ways to do that is with, uh, well, actually two, um, two things. The first one I would say is grounding. Um, and grounding, that's another term that's thrown around all the time, but let's ground. Um, and grounding to me, um, I think one of the simplest ways to explain what grounding is, it, it goes, it's part of our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system. So, when you're in fight and flight versus rest and digest. 
So fight and flight is all the stress and everybody running around and, and they're not thinking and they're just kind of um, uh, stressed out trying to, to do everything, you know, multitasking, get all these, these things done. But when, when the body is in rest and digest, with, um, we can actually feel more, we're more centered in our core. We're definitely more calm. We're able to make decisions more clearly. Um, and when we're, you know, grounded and uh, connected to Mother Earth, which um, um, oh, I have a couple um, um, ideas on how to do that. But um, when we have that, that centered and that clarity, um, we're not going to just flow with wherever the wind takes us. We're going to be able to make better decisions on where we want to go. Uh, one of my favorite um, grounding exercises is actually working with trees. So <laughs> I am technically a tree hugger. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm but with you. it's you too. Hundred um, <laughs> percent. And it's well, it it works, and it has been around. It's been a technique that has been used by. Uh, Native Americans. It was brought up in my Reiki training. Um, but uh, trees are, you know, they have really deep roots. So they help us to really ground into Mother Earth. So if you just walk up to a tree, um, I usually like to introduce myself and ask the tree for permission. Um, and you can literally just hug the tree, put your arms around the tree, put your torso um, against the bark and then I always like to make sure that your your forehead also touches and then you can just ask the tree Take all this. Would you please just take all this stress away? Take all this, you know monkey mind mentalness I, You know, I can't get my mind to shut down all this rumination Whatever is going on with your life and the tree will gladly just take that down and ground that into mother earth And it doesn't take long like like, you know 10 seconds 30 seconds at the most. It's 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 really quick uh, have you ever hugged a tree, Jason? Oh, absolutely. I am a huge fan, huge fan. I have, uh, I, I have trees uh, on our property that, that I regularly just walk up to and, and hug. And uh, like you said, the introduction and, and permission, uh, I figure after you know a couple of years of introducing myself, they probably know who I am. So uh, I just go ahead and do it. Uh, I do forget that sometimes when I'm out and about and I see a tree that I just absolutely love. Uh, but they're... Uh, they're they're so just steady and strong for us. Uh, one of the things that that I re, uh, relate to people with about that grounding technique is uh, trees often survive with uh, unscathed from a lightning attack. Right? Some of them don't. Uh, they don't always make it, and some of them you know do get uh, you know affected by it. But the reality is that they they can take the one of the most powerful things in the un in our known universe and on our planet and and shoot it into the ground and dissipate it so uh, taking a few problems away from us is is pretty easy for them uh, I also find too that just sitting uh, with your back against a tree uh, also also Definitely. is helpful and and a lot of times um, as a thank you to the tree uh, I'll take water with me or um, maybe take like a small seashell uh, I like to transfer things back and forth so if I'm at the ocean, I like to bring wood to the ocean, or if I'm at a tree, I like to bring a seashell or some sand um, back to the tree so that uh, that's just kind of an offering that they, uh, that they can appreciate and that it gives for a nice energy exchange uh, for something for us to do physically. And uh, grounding is all about physicality, right? It's all about uh, get, being in your body and being in your experience. And for, for me, uh, my focus in grounding and the definition for me is like you said, getting out of that headspace and getting this thing <laughs> that is, that is really just here in service to our soul, this mind thing, getting it down into, uh, into a calm state where, like you said, we can make better decisions and things are just more steady and more peaceful and, and, uh, more solid in, in all honesty. And uh, any, any way to do that with the ground, whether it's a tree or a rock or a river or, you know, a grass, soil, taking your shoes off and just putting your feet into the earth and, and just connecting to the earth and doing the same thing. Mother Earth or, you know, hey, dirt, will you take some of the stress through my feet, please? <laughs> it's really, it really can be that easy. And, and it's such an easy tool that, uh, that we forget is so accessible to us all the time. It is. And another um, great technique for grounding, um, if you can't put your hands on some dirt or be by a tree or be outdoors, 
um, is eating. Who doesn't like food? And one of my favorite foods to ground with is chocolate. And who doesn't like chocolate? How easy is that? <laughs> do, you, do we have to ask the chocolate permission? Um, I never have, I have to admit. I, I've given them thanks, but I, have, I don't think I've asked them permission. <laughs> Thank you, chocolate. I'm going to consume you now. You don't have a choice in this. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great tool. I, that, that's one that, uh, uh, that I always uh, have available, especially when I, if I'm doing readings or I'm at a psychic event, some type of fair or something, I always have chocolate available because people get floaty. Um, I get floaty, and, and sometimes that, that is the perfect thing, but uh, eating, uh, drinking, anything that's really that, that physical, the physical thing is to, uh, is a way to get, you know, grounded. Uh, also, just remembering that it's about the five senses, so, you know, music or, uh, or, or you know, just putting your hands on something that's solid, uh, not a helium balloon. <laughs> no, you know, but but putting your hands on the ground or just on your on yourself while you're sitting down, that kind of thing is uh, is really useful. So, um, thank you for those tools. Those are those are really great tools. Uh, so grounding kind of leads us to another place that uh, that I'd love for us to to discuss a little bit, and uh, that is intuition. Because when we are uh, out of our head and in our body, uh, it's a lot easier to connect to our intuition. So uh, rather than go too far too fast here, what what is your definition, Jill, of intuition? What is it to you? Um, in very simple terms, it's our spidey sense. I mean, people use that terminology all the time. It's our spidey sense. Um, our intuition is that is that internal gut instinct. Um, you know, you wanted to call somebody, or you call another person who's calling at the same time. Um, that you're driving down the road and you're like, you know, I really need to turn right here, and I don't know why. Um, you know, other examples is, you know, you're walking out the door and I really need to grab this or bring this with me. You know, I'm going to go meet my friends. And I, I, and I, it's, there's usually sometimes that I don't know why concept with it as well. It, it's you're kind of getting these impulses uh, to do something. And it may not make sense um, while we're doing it or while we're getting that impulse, but that can become clear later. So can you maybe help us out a little bit uh, with some ways that you, that, that you attune yourself to pay attention to the impulse? Because uh, a lot of us, that, like, that thing pops up and then we just kind of blaze right by it. So uh, what, what would be, uh, I, I mean, slowing down, and, and that is, is one way to say it, but uh, how, how would you say people can be more aware of those impulses and give themselves a chance to react to them? Great question. Um, I think the answer is twofold. A is awareness and B, practice, practice, practice. Um, uh, once you start becoming aware of these instincts, these spidey senses of um, these tinglings of, of, of information, it's learning how to understand and process those. And to me, that takes a lifetime. Um, I've been working on my own internal intuition again for decades it's kind of been in this world for a while but um, it, it's a constant refinement but I think once we have it in our awareness and um, that we start to have some type of internal connection with it we develop it and grow it um, and then the other thing I would recommend for people is to um, and this is where that grounding and being in body is so important um, it's not only just the messages, but where are you feeling it in your body when it comes along? You know, is it, are you feeling it in your stomach? Are you feeling it in your head, your heart? And, you know, let's try and really um, um, be more at one with your body um, with that interpretation. And, and it's, it's a very personal interpretation how it goes, comes through to everybody. 
That was great. That was great. Thank you for uh, for expanding on that a little bit. That's uh, that that's useful information. Uh, and and I think it's uh, useful to point out that uh, intuition is is something that we're always working with, and and we're always refining it. But that does not take away from the initial impulses and what it's like early on. And even if you work on it every day, uh, like a lot of us do, and and as you mentioned that you do, Jill, uh, it's still a work in progress. So you're we're, we're always uh, finding new ways to connect to it, and uh, and and it's okay for for your intuition not to be right every time and for us to have misinterpretations of that it's really uh, like she said uh, Jill's talking about that gut feeling and that that sense of I I really feel like I need to do this or I need to do that and and, and giving yourself an opportunity to do those things and and just be okay with it right to to allow us to make mistakes and it not be the perfect thing I think that's just as powerful as hitting it right on the nose too you know absolutely it's progress not perfection because it, it's it's a constant for sure awesome awesome so uh we're gonna we're gonna play with one more concept here that uh we're just gonna stay on the surface of it because it's a deep one. Ooh, meditation and what is what does that mean to everybody and uh one misconception that uh, has been it's starting to get more and more eradicated, which I'm glad to see is that uh, you have to be uh, uh, up on a mountain with, uh, you know, with your, your legs crossed and your, your fingertips barely touching and saying, Oh, <laughs> but the, the reality is that meditation, Definitely. Uh, it takes so many different forms. So give us a, just a basic understanding of what the word meditation itself means to you, Jill. Okay. Um, I like this definition of meditation, um, and it's, a, it's a, a discipline of entering the mind into a deep state of relaxation. So what does that mean? Um, and I'm with you, Jason. I don't have uh, time to sit in the lotus position and meditate for, you know, two, four, 12 hours a day. That's, that's just not the purpose. Um, I think meditation is, it's, it truly is a technique to help us, um, to help us quiet the mind is, is really part of the purpose. Again, it is a technique to help us become more internal versus external. And it's, um, and, and I'm not really strict on meditation. I have, there's a few ways I think that we can do it. Um, for those that are really, that, that can sit there and, and uh, really go into and quieting the mind, that's great. Um, but there are some people, depending on where they're starting, they're so kinetic and then to sit for, you know, five, 10 minutes, may not work for them. So to me, anything that kind of uh, takes you, gets you to be able to unplug from the external world and to do something that is uh, calming and relaxing. So that can be, you know, just something simple as washing dishes, you know, painting, um, you know, those are all very meditative states, you know, going for a walk in nature, going out with your animals, your dogs, um, that can be just very, you know, it's not only grounding, since we talk about grounding, but it can help put us um, into that meditative um, state of relaxation. Um, uh, so again, it's the, 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 the point and purpose of med any, whatever form of meditation that you're doing is removing yourself from the external world and trying to go more internal so you can, you know, get in touch more with what's, what's going on with your, your feelings and, and um, what you need to be um, aware of. Um, and then I have a, a couple of tips and, and tricks, um, on how to quiet the mind. Uh, did you want to say anything else about meditation? How would, did, did that write that makes sense to you or? Oh yeah, that, that made great sense. Um, the, the one thing that I'd like to point out and you definitely touched on it, uh, is that when you're doing the grounding and you know, whether it's with a tree or the soil or whatever, you're, you're already reaching for that meditative state. You're already setting the stage for that. In fact, that in itself, in just that 30 <laughs> seconds could, could be a meditation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a big dog. <laughs> so that in itself can be a meditation. So I, I just, uh, want to point out that it doesn't have to be over, you know, a big, length of time and 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 taking small steps and just setting that intention um i find that i get meditative when i'm cooking because i know well i know i'm gonna eat <laughs> so that's always good right 
So, uh, but, but the smells and the way things, you know, stirring and the repetitive nature of that, um, like you said, with painting and not necessarily on a canvas, but even just painting a room and that and the, the way the, the brush goes up and down and uh, anything repetitive like that is, is it can put you in that kind of state. So, uh, yeah, thank you for, for pointing that out. And absolutely, let's let's hear a couple of your uh, tools and and tips about how we can do that at a most basic level. Okay, well, um, what I find when I'm working with people, especially when it comes to meditation, most people have a really difficult time quieting their mind. Our mind is so busy in, in Chinese medicine, we call it monkey mind. Uh, you know, it's, it's constantly going and talking and, and uh, we, you know, keep uh, rumination, we keep thinking about things, keep going round and round in our head with stuff. So we need to first start with that. And I speak from experience because uh, especially when I, I worked for corporate America way back when, um, you know, that was, you know, very type A, constantly going, constantly thinking. And so um, trying to harness your thoughts, um, it was the hardest thing for me to, to begin with. And so I figured, well, if my mind is going to be racing and usually it's on stuff that we can't control or worry and all this other stuff anyway, I'm going to give it homework. I'm going to have it start. I'm going to train it to work in my favor. So a couple of my favorite ways I would do that uh, is through uh, prayer and or mantra. So, um, so it's, I'm going to just, if it my if my mind wants to go, I'm going to train it to, to focus on something that is a higher, um, that is going to be more calming and more productive for me. So, you know, prayer, prayer is, um, you know, words that you use. It, it's your, the way you commune with with spirit with god um and it could be uh, repeating the our father the hail mary um whatever makes sense to you or if there's some um, people can use affirmations um it, it has to make sense to you and there has to have some kind of meaning that has some i'm going to just say some heart to it there that you know it kind of it, it moves you in a certain way um, and that could even be music too. You mentioned music, so if there's a you know really beautiful um, uh, you know a song that you like that's that you know helps to set you in that state. Just kind of continue running that in your mind. Um, and then the other option could be uh, what's called a mantra. Uh, so a mantra you might have heard of Om. Most people have heard of the Om. Uh, Om is uh, helps to also kind of get us in the right mindset for that meditation. So um, you could just keep repeating the word OM in your head um, or any other kind of um, uh, mantra. And, and the word mantra kind of translates to, um, um, it has more of a uh, spiritual vibration or sound that is gonna kind of work again on a deeper level. And I'm, I'm gonna, I, I don't wanna get into terms that we're gonna need more definitions with. Um, but does, does that make sense to you? And just trying to kind of first, because if we're starting out here and then we can't calm the mind, then let's train it to do this. And then once we can get more in that state is then when we can actually enter more of that silence of the mind, which is the, you know, the ideal place of, of, of meditation of where we want to take it. Uh, that that actually really does make sense, and you make uh, some really great points there. Uh, one one for sure is the repetition, and mm -hmm. and just doing the same thing um, over and over again. While it, it may feel monotonous in our world, we so seldom do that, uh, and that's a perfect way to get, get to get your mind busy, doing something different and and repeating it. Um, one of the the things that I've used to ground and to set space for meditation uh, was channeled through Paul Selig, and I found it in one of his books. Uh, and it is the uh, the repetition of "I know who I am, I know what I am, and I know how I serve." And and for me, that that's has beautiful. I love that. Yeah, that that's that is a, a statement that was originally set forth to be a grounding thing, but when I say it. Uh, and I repeat it, I, I give my, my whole being something to do. I, I know who I am, I know what I am, and I know how I serve. All of those pieces are so very basically spiritual and so vast at the same time. It just kind of, like everything else, it just shuts it off. Because you, you, it's it's enough to think about. And uh, I love that you came up with the prayer piece and shared that. And, and it's not restrictive. Prayer is what it is for anybody, just like meditation. And it can be any prayer. 
any prayer will work, even if it's just I am. You can just say I am, I am, I am, and and that works too. So the absolutely, the and and the key with all of that is, is the um, is the personal meaning for yourself, and, and I think that goes back to the whole our whole spiritual life and journey. It's very our spiritual journey is very individual for um, for every person. My spiritual journey is going to look and feel different than yours and and somebody else's. And, and it's not about, uh, it's not a competition and it's not a comparison. Um, it's the, it's always a deeper understanding of our truth and who we are. That, that's a great way to, to wrap all of the things we've talked about today up is that it, that it is, uh, it is what it is for each person, even though we may have the same energy and we may recognize each other and know each other, our collective experience over uh, this lifetime and any others, um, all the others just makes things so different. Everybody's a collection of their experiences and, and truth is what it is for each person, right? So uh, that, that's a great way to, to recognize for everyone that how you're doing it is working just fine. You're right where you are supposed to be doing just what you're supposed to be doing. It is that easy and it's okay to be where you're at, especially when you're watching the Spiritual Handyman internet TV show. Oh, selfless plug. That was, that was so cool. Uh, so Jill, thank you so much for being on the show today uh, and, and sharing your viewpoint and bringing some simple tools to us. I, I think those things are extremely uh, powerful. I, I love simple. Simple always works. Uh, tell us a little bit about where people can find you and learn more about what you do. Absolutely. Uh, my website is feathertouchacupuncture.com. Um, and there's, uh, if you go to the, my website has a list of all the different uh, services that I offer and provide. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that we dis discussed too, I'm always happy to, uh, to talk. And I, I hope that you all found this very uh, helpful and informative. Thanks so much, Jill. And, and I will tell you guys that I've had a session uh, with Jill and it was next level. It was so amazing. Uh, and, and let me tell you, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out how to get her on retainer as my astrologist because she is an extremely skilled astrologist and so passionate. Uh, she's really a passionate and brings love and understanding and support to everything that she does. But uh, we don't, uh, our show, a half an hour is not even enough to touch on all the uh, tools that she has in her toolbox. So uh, take that opportunity to uh, check the comments down below and get a look at Jill's website. And uh, like she said, she's always willing to connect and talk. So reach out. If I, and Jason, if I may, really quick, um, because especially people who are new in the spiritual world have a hard time understanding who they are and their gifts and talents, um, I would like to offer a special uh, for an astrology reading, uh, since you brought that up. And so uh, normally my rate would be 170, 175 for the astrology reading. But for anyone that watches this and is interested in, in, interested in understanding more of who they are, what their gifts and talents and, and um are, I'll offer that to your um, uh, viewership for 144. Um, and I did want to say thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I wish you so much success and you're spot on um, with offering um, this beautiful uh, video and podcast and everything to people on their spiritual path. Thank you so much. You're, you're so welcome, and thanks for being on the show. Uh, we have already created a list of other spiritual jargon that we'll probably need defining in the future, and we will uh, we'll set that up. So let us know how you enjoyed the show, folks, and uh, check everything out on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, at thespiritualhandyman.com, and uh, all the information that uh, has been shared with you today as far as uh, links and emails and contact information uh, will all be available in the those places. So uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Jill, and thank each and every one of you for listening and participating. Uh, we thank all of our viewers, and uh, we will see you on the next episode of The Spiritual Handyman.